wear something red in one of your profile pics because okay. it, it's one of the most attractive colors for men. It's been scientifically okay. proven. Welcome, everybody. We're doing a very fun episode today with Kimmy Seltzer, who is a confidence therapist, authentic dating strategist, and image expert with a vat of knowledge and experience as a therapist, certified style coach, dating coach, and matchmaker. She has helped people find lasting love and connection, attract success, and build valuable relationships using her unique confidence makeover process. Using an outside-in approach, Kimmy implements targeted style, emotional and social intelligence in people's lives using her signature formula, the Charisma Quotient, working on body language, first impressions, image and wardrobe, and flirting and how it impacts attraction. This Los Angeles-based expert travels the country helping people discover confidence, charisma, and connection as a speaker at TEDx, National Matchmaking Conferences, eHarmony, Neutrogena, The Guild at Universal, UCLA, and iDate. Kimmy is also a regular contributor to the Huffington Post with appearances in Cosmopolitan, Oprah Magazine, Red Book, Reader's Digest, Ask Men, Fox News Magazine, Yahoo, and the Washington Examiner, among many more. Kimmy has been the leading love expert on the traveling live dating show, The Great Love Debate a show on Amazon Live with Sway TV, Kimmy's Love Hub, and the cable reality series, The Romance. You can also listen to her on her podcast, The Charisma Quotient, and regular Ask Kimmy segments on the Chaz and AJ Morning Show on 99.1, I don't know if it was 99.1 or dot one, PLR, (laughs) and 95.9 The Fox. So, Thank you so much, Kimmy, for joining me. I'm so excited, and I just like can't wait for my audience to learn all of your tricks, <laughs> or however many we can get you in the episode. Oh, I know, right? Well, we'll tease with a couple of tricks, and um, I know I, I always crack up when I hear my bio being played back. I know, it's so me, weird, right? It is, <laughs> well, and not only is it weird, I... I, I just like kind of laugh when I reflect on my professional experience because really the reason why I'm so passionate about doing what I do is because of my own mess and my own story. Okay. Yes. And, and that's why like, you know, we always are our own best teachers. And yep. sometimes like when you have adversity, you know, when you're in it, it's, it, it feels like the worst thing that could happen to you. But it, to me, it's really the best because that's where I learned and now I help so many other people with. So, well, you kind of just like opened into what my first question is going to yeah, be. I kind of knew that. I've, I'm, <laughs> I've been kind of podcasting for a while. So, I, I, was, I was actually hoping you would ask me for my story. So, I would love to hear your story because I know. So, part of why I wanted to talk to you. Um, so, Kimmy and I met like, kind of randomly at Podfest through mutual friends. And then when I heard that you are also a former therapist turned coach, I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And we both kind of focus on different aspects of relationships now. And so I was like, yeah, I need to talk to this lady. (laughs) I know. We had so much in common. And then you Mm -hmm. heard me on the other podcast and we're like, we're meant meant to do this. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I would love to hear like, what has your journey been like to get to this point? Yeah. And um Really? I mean, I have like long, how, how much time do we have? Because I have a long time. <laughs> I forgot to ask you how long. We'll have to develop old. hand signals if it goes too far. I, know. I, think, okay. I think we're and good. You can yeah. Cut me off at any time, yeah. but it really okay. is important to what we're about to talk about creating that sexy confidence. Because if you knew me back when, um, I, I, I would not be wearing this pink shirt. And I um, hmm. certainly. <laughs> didn't have a skip in my step as a lot of my pictures depict. Um, So the story is, is that I was this kind of good girl from Chicago living a very traditional life. I'm also from Chicago. Wait, you are? Yes. Okay. See. I was also a very good girl growing up. (laughs) You might relate a lot to the story. Okay. Let's go. Then kind of this, um, tr- I, I was on a traditional track, right? Like I, I practiced as a therapist. I, I had the picket fence and the dog and a couple of kids and the husband. I still have the kids, by the way, but you see what okay. the story is. <laughs> um, so we, we decide to all kind of pick up and move across the country to here, La La Land, where I landed, mm-hmm. Los Angeles. And we get here and we decided to do what all the other people here do. We get a divorce 
And, and <laughs> no. I mean, I, is that like, like a rite I, of passage with LA? Yeah, I, and okay. I, like I like to blame LA, but the truth is, is I would have been here regardless. Fair. Um, and I like to blame LA, but really, what what happened is when I was removed from kind of this cocoon that I was in, you know, I was faced with something that wasn't working, right? And when you have kind of the external things that are removed, you're left with just each other. And yep. yeah, so anyway, there I was all alone in my new castle, not knowing what to do with my new life. Now, here's the kicker. I'm a therapist. Like, you'll relate to this, right? Like, I I, I should know how to get out of my own way, and yet I couldn't. And I did all the traditional things, by the way. Like, okay, I got therapy myself. I had a great support system back home, but I didn't have one, you know, in LA. So right. that part That's was tough. really isolating, right? Yeah. And um, I have these two young kids, and I was going down a very dark path. And I call it my black period because if you had seen me back then, I was literally wearing black every single day and wow. ginormous clothes, to say the least. This I saw is my so nursing. Interesting. Yeah, I saw my nur- I saw my nursing bras on, um, and I wasn't nursing wow. any longer. So you could see, like, I had the flip flops on. I mean, it just it was not a hot picture. And okay, I I remember just in that moment, and this is part of what my TEDx talk was about, is just the defining moment that really kind of get got me out of bed. Because I, mm. I, every time I went to get out there and date and start over, I would just go back to bed. And yeah. there was one day that just changed it all. I woke up and I took a hard look in the mirror and I really saw myself. Like I was horrified at what I saw. Like what, what happened to me? You know, I was just like frumpy mom, you know, all alone. And I'm like, so I'm doing all this heady stuff, analysis paralysis, yet nothing's moving. So I did something really untraditional. I went shopping. Like this is where it all started. I'm like, nothing fits me. I am pro retail therapy. Retail (laughs) therapy. So I I go to the store and I think I'm up leveling myself by getting new clothes, but no, I'm doing all the same things. I'm collecting black clothes in my arms, you know? And this personal shopper, she comes up to me and I now call her my angel. Wow. She she looks at me, she says, Ma'am, I've been watching you. And I really think you should try this on. And she holds up a red dress that looked like three sizes too small. And by mm. the way, my body had changed. I lost all this weight. And I it just I hadn't oh. seen it, right? And huh. so I, I said, that's really sweet of you, but that that's really not my size. And that's so not my color. She says, honey, that is your size. That is your color. Try it on. Interesting. It's like she hit me over the head with that red dress. And I, I now refer to it as my red dress moment and what I help so many other people with. And when I came to, I said, you know what? She's right. I need to do something different. I need Mm -hmm. to feel something different. And so I slipped into that dress and I twirled around like Cinderella and I looked in the mirror right again. And I was like, so cute. I love it. It was like a fairy tale. Like, like, bam. And there I was, this like princess. And I I got this visceral response that was going on in my body. And I'm like, you know, I I think I'm going to buy this dress. Wow. And so I bought it as a costume and I called it a costume because I still don't really believe that it was me, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to practice wearing this. And here's the funny thing that happened and which changed the entire course of my business, um, my m- mindset, even what I teach today. Cause up until that like defining moment, mm-hmm. I believed you have to work from the inside out to get results. I no longer believe that. Because what happened to me in that mm-hmm. moment is I walked out into the world in that red dress and all this stuff started happening to me. And this was my surprise. New suitors began to come my way oh. and and men started paying attention to me. And guess what? I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. So all the stuff that I was like, oh, I just wish I could you know, look pretty. But no, I was scared of being seen. So really the yes. black clothes was a cloak to keep me invisible from the men. And yes. I didn't I didn't see it at the time until that moment. And so I had to just get used to being seen. And I wore that red dress in the grocery store. I wore it in the coffee shop until I embraced it. And then I became it. And that's when everything started changing. All the stuff you read in my bio, you know, kind of started happening to me. But 
the, the, what really came out of it is I now work from the outside in that how we market ourselves is definitely correlated to who we attract and the messages we send out to the world. Cause you could do all this juicy work on the inside, mm-hmm. but if you're not marketing yourself with your energy, with your body language and how you're putting yourself out there and together, yeah. love might pass you by. So that's where my business was born. And then I started, you know, trying to do this, like I call it what, cause I was obsessed with the show, what not to wear. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was very I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, so I studied to be an image consultant. I started doing makeovers on people and Love I that. just saw this like power in the makeover process that I could get at somebody's issues and help them through it in one shopping spree versus years in therapy that I was doing before. So I'm like, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm sure you have other questions, but that (laughs) is why I do what I do. (laughs) No, I mean, I'm having all these thoughts, you know, as you're talking, because um, obviously I'm, you know, trained as a therapist as well. And I still have my, you know, license and everything. But um, I feel like what you're saying is kind of this idea of like talking about things versus having an experience Mm -hmm. too. And, you know, I, I'm very honest with my clients that, you know, that I think that's one of the shortcomings of talk therapy is, um, you know, I do some approaches where there is an experiential component. Like I love internal family systems and it's like an internal yeah. experience you're having. But um, sometimes I think it is just like being out in the world and wearing a different dress helps us become so aware. And so it's not like you're not doing the emotional work. It's just kind of the order of things is different. And I also feel like I'm curious what you think. Like there's an element of like integrating it into our body by having the experience that if we're too in our head, you know, we don't really get that. What do you think? Yeah, (laughs) well, exactly. And that's why I came up with this formula called the charisma quotient, which is the name of my podcast, which I'm on by the way. And, um, and in, in that formula, I work with three pillars Mm -hmm. And the first pillar I call style intelligence, which is, you know, your body language, your wardrobe, your energy, your presentation, your first impressions, your sexual energy. It's all the stuff that you're like putting out there. Then I go inward and work on emotional intelligence. And I know you do a lot of work with that too and how Mm -hmm. we express ourselves in ways Mm -hmm. of vulnerability, authenticity, the emotional triggers that we use when we're meeting people that create attraction, um, all of those things. And then the third pillar is social intelligence, which is, you know, how we manage interpersonal communication, conversation, tricks, flirting, all, all the ways of like just interacting with someone and your social comfort. So Mm -hmm. I believe that those three areas are the foundation of which creates opportunity to find love. And usually there are things or pieces of the puzzle missing in each of those areas. And so it's just figuring out what a person needs. So I'm very skill-based in the way that I I approach it. It's very practical. Yeah. And tactical because, you know, again, and I do a lot of talking and I infuse therapy in my process, but to your point, it's like, at what point do you get off the couch and start living, (laughs) you know? And Mm -hmm. so you know, I go out and I do wing gal sessions with people and I oh teach God, people I how that. to flirt in the bars, right? And I go shopping and I do makeovers. It's that experiential piece that really integrates all the things that you absorb and listen to. And that's yeah. to me what gets results. I want to hear more about the flirting piece because I think people would really I knew you it. would. <laughs> Somehow I kind of figured. Yeah. Because I feel like whether they're single or even when they're like married for 20 yeah. years, almost especially, they kind of like stop flirting and become roommates. And a lot of people who are single are kind of like, I don't know how to flirt. I don't like, that's not my thing. And I'm like, I know you have it in there. So like, what are the things you do to work with people to like get the flirting out of them and into the world? Yeah. Well, I, I just love flirting so much. I do virtual workshops and I, I have, um, dating retreats that I do that I, you know, I teach people how to flirt and also work one-on-one with people. And the thing that's interesting about flirting is if you look in the dictionary at the definition, it's fascinating. It, it says to behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. 
Really? And I love that because if you think about that last part, being attached to the outcome is what trips everyone up. You know, 100%. I've heard every excuse under the book. So like, yeah. oh, well, I'm not, I'm not interested in him. And by the way, I work with men and women. So I, I hear okay. both excuses, you know, like, cool. yeah, or, okay. um, why, why would I flirt with someone I'm, I'm not into? I don't want to give them the wrong impression. Um, I'm not good <laughs> at it. Um, uh, oh God, the list goes on and on. And I, I usually show everyone the excuses that they have after they've already said it, you know? So like you have them like mean? written down. Yeah. I yeah. Love that. It's already there. They're like, how did you know? I'm like, well, cause you're not yeah. alone and everyone's mm-hmm. outcome oriented. So what that means is that if, if everyone's being attached to what's next, yep. then it's hard to flirt because flirting is about now. Flirting right. is about being present. It's about creating a magnetism that just draws people to you. And I mean, this is kind of partly the work that you do as well. It's that playfulness, sexual energy that you're creating with someone without worrying about what that person might think or feel. You're just right. doing what you want. And right. so it's very empowering as well. Yeah. Because the truth is you can move on to anybody you want. Like you have control 100%. over that. You can have a play date with anyone, but if you treat the world, I, this is what I tell people all the time, treat the world as your playground. You mm-hmm. can swing on a couple of swings with people. You can go on the <laughs> saws with people. Like if it's more like childlike playfulness. Yeah, I love and that. And be like, oh my God, are you my boyfriend? Are you my girlfriend? Right. Like that's right. when people clam up and get in their heads. Right. Right. So that's the first thing that I always teach people is, first of all, what's what's your definition? What are your fears and excuses around it? And you know this as a therapist as well, that usually it's all attached to something else. Right. right. People stop themselves based on what they're attaching flirting and sexual mm-hmm. kind of innuendos to. And it's usually something from the past, other relationships, fears of getting hurt again, whatever it is. So right. Or messages they got, like even from their parents about, you know, like, oh, good girls don't do that or you right. know, whatever it is. So that's the first step. And then after that, of course, I have like, you know, kind of little formula that I teach people around flirting. And it's different for everyone, but so much of it is nonverbal. You know, people worry okay. about like, well, what do I say when I flirt? That's part of it. Uh-huh. But before that, it's your body language. What you don't say is more important than what you say. 93% of communication is nonverbal. I love that. So it, it's, it, it's, it's an energy. I mean, it, it, for a yeah. woman, all she has to do is like make eye contact and smile and, and you have them. You have them at hello. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? So many people are like, what do I say? What do I say? I'm like, well, what do you, you don't like, just don't worry about what to say. Right. How, how are you being? What's right. your energy like? What right. are you wearing? Yeah. I love the way you're describing this because it's not like a tips and tricks thing. It's really like highlighting this idea because, you know, I talk about sexual energy being life force energy. And I think flirtation is like sexual energy. Yeah. And, you know, I had an interesting experience that's like exactly what you're saying uh, on Saturday. My friend had a booth at a fair. It was kind of promoting her gym. And I just like showed up for an hour or two to like help her out and relieve her. And they wound up kind of breaking down early. So I was helping with that. But they have these like tiny little dumbbells. And like I was just being a goofball. I was just like, you know, lifting like two pound dumbbells, like waving to everyone who goes by and being like, hey, anyone need a trainer? And and she was kind of joking to me like, you know, how are you doing this? This is so good. I need you to be here all day. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm just being flirtatious and not caring. And I think it was exactly what you're saying. And like, I talk about the idea that, you know, there's flirting with intention, but then there's also people who just like flirt with like grandparents and babies. And it's like not about an outcome and it's like a way of life and a way of being. So it's exactly what you're saying. That no, I I I tell people all the time, yeah, flirt with a dog, flirt with a baby, <laughs> like everybody, and you also because like you don't know who's watching you, and you don't know if the person that you're talking to maybe is not your person, but they right. know somebody. Like this is a true story. Um, I, I tell this a lot because it's like one of my favorites. Is I was coaching a woman, and we were you know sitting at the bar, and I was teaching her kind of like some of the tips and things that I wanted her to practice, mm-hmm. and I entered a conversation with a gentleman first and then it was her turn and who sits next to us, but an older gentleman, he Mm -hmm. was probably 20 years, her senior, Mm -hmm. um, married. Okay. Um, and not 
her body type. I'll just say that. Okay. Like, he wasn't interesting somebody start. she would be attracted to. And mm-hmm. like everything about him was wrong. Right. Down to the point where he was married. Right. And she looks at me and she's like, Kim, I'm not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> like, Kimmy, I do said, I have to do this? Yeah, I'm like, oh, you're doing it. You're doing it. And, and I said, I'm going to the bathroom and I expect when I get back that you're going to be in a conversation with him. <laughs> And so, so she, you know, I'm like, you just paid me a lot of money. Like, the tough might as well, part. right? Yeah. Do it. So, um, I come back and she did it. She started talking to me. Now, this guy ended up being amazing. Like, he was Aww. from New Zealand. He was hilarious and madly in love with his wife. He was showing mm-hmm. pictures of his wife and him and how they met and telling the beautiful story. Now I see my client kind of softening, like, oh, he's a nice guy. I'm like, yeah, he's a totally cool guy. In the middle of the conversation, he says, by any chance, are either one of you girls single? Mm-hmm. I said, well, yeah, my 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 friend here is my client. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, good. I was hoping you'd say that because I have a friend in town who I actually think you guys would really like each other. I'm like, well, hmm. where is he? Bring him out. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I think I will, but we, we probably can't meet you out till later. I said, that's fantastic. So we exchange information. By the end of the day, I like I created a monster because we have like all these guys <laughs> around us. And I told him to, to meet, you know, at this hotel. And so he does, and he in walks the friend mm-hmm. who was dropped at gorgeous, her age, oh. and they completely hit it off. And that oh guy ended up being her boyfriend. What? I like that's a really good story. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. And like people always say to me, they're like, "Did you plant that person?" I'm like I, I don't know that many people to plant. Like yeah. I know a lot of people, but not you know. It just you're happens right though. Yeah, but it, when you create that energy, you just draw people to you and 100%. you're also in a more open state. Yep. And when you're in that open state, you're taking the blinders off and you're really seeing who's around you. And I find that mm-hmm. so many people walk around with the blinders on mm-hmm. or being target specific or yeah. you know, down in their phones and you know, they're they're not putting it, things out with intention and that's mm-hmm. half the battle. Gosh, I love I love this whole idea and I hope people can take that away. Like be open. I also think there's an element of like just connect with humans, you know? Like I think if you're just like this is a human, I can connect with them. It doesn't have to be a certain way or go a certain way and also like I can bring the fun. They don't even have to be a certain way. Oh my god, Heather, I love that you said that cuz I yeah. I'll even tell people like even if you're going out on a bad date, have fun with yourself. Like date yourself. Yeah. Just, just like crack yourself up. And I always find you'll learn something, even in a bad date, about maybe a new restaurant or maybe yeah. there's someone in the restaurant that you meet or you have an event at that. You know, like there's something that can come out of everything. Mm-hmm. And when you have that kind of open mindset that also creates opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like the world is your oyster, but so many people I think have been shut down and also since the pandemic that didn't help. And so it's really like this opening that gets to happen that really, Mm -hmm. I I have so many stories like the one that I told and only it's because when you do the work and you're open to it, things happen. Yeah. I totally agree with you. And um, I think it's good timing with, you know, the pandemic kind of being over where people are wanting to connect and you know but it, it probably is a little bit more of like trying to get over a hump now because it's like they're out of practice so i think this is very timely information um i'd love to hear more about you know still on the flirting topic women being in their feminine energy with flirting and like what does that look like oh this is such a great topic um you know i have this uh, archetype quiz i'm happy to share it with your audience um for women and there are five types of women I find okay. you know, after doing this for so long, which is, which makes like in each archetype has a challenge around it. Okay. And I think the piece around femininity, except for one of the archetypes is kind of a through line with all of them. Interesting. In that I just think as women, we're becoming so powerful a- in mm-hmm. the workforce and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's confusion too around what that looks like in yeah. ways because I think there's a new surgence of femininity that's different mm-hmm. than like maybe in the 1950s, you know, mm-hmm. that you don't have to go back to that, you know? Agree. Yeah. Um, 
so it, it's a, it is a powerful essence, but I think for me, the way that I like to just define it is receiving is when you're Love that. open in a, you know, just in that state of receiving again, like a man feels, I mean, if that's what you're into, a man feels that empowered to be the man and take care. And, and you know, and if you are that kind of person that wants that, right. you have to allow it. Like right. that's the thing. I like there was funny. I was coaching um, a couple of my VIP clients, and we were in Vegas, and so, what a perfect place to practice. And <laughs> yeah. she's you know, high powered woman, CEO, like go getter. You know, she walks like she means it. You know, okay. and I was just like, and this to me is the femininity piece is like just to slow down, hmm. and and to just like breathe into your yeah. environment and like look around you. And that's part of receiving is just even being like aware of who's noticing you mm -hmm. and taking in your environment. And when you slow down again, other things happen. Anyway, she, she darts right to the bar to get herself a drink. I said, whoa, 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 okay. wait, what are you doing? She's like, <laughs> well, I'm getting a drink. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> let a man do that. She's like, well, how's that going to happen? I'm like, it can happen very easily, but not the way that you're walking into this room. Mm -hmm. So I had her send back the drink and I said, let's go sit at the bar and just have some conversation and just be open to the possibility of receiving a drink. And by the end of the night, we had guys buying us drinks left and right. Now, and look, it's not about the money or the drink. Right. It was about the connection. And, right. You know, a uh, the men felt compelled to do that because of the mm -hmm. connection we created, but also the receiving. Right. And the shift in energy, working. like you're saying, sort of this yeah. closed energy that's like very action oriented and like target oriented versus sort of, I'm going to be present and open and receptive and just like have an experience and not even know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think especially in this day and age, everyone's so quick. We're in a swipe culture, right? So I know everyone's just like so quick to do things like yeah. quick interaction, quick this, quick that, run through life. Da, da, da. And so when you slow down and really take the time to make connections, that's to me, that's part of femininity is a leaning back. So it's an opening, mm. it's a, a leaning back, it's a, re mm -hmm. a, a receiving mode. Um, and with that is so much of it, again, is body language. I mean, it yeah. is about the messaging that we use in conversations and the mm -hmm. way that we ask questions and being open. But it's also about just this, you know, kind of nice, smiling, girly kind of fun that you get to create with your body language too. Yeah. So I do a lot of work on body language. It's huge. And, and it's often overlooked. I, that's a really good point. And I think even as a therapist, you know, I was not like trained or educated really on body language. You know, some minimal stuff was mentioned here and there, but I agree with you. I think it's something that's kind of missing quite a bit, but that people are really interested in. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and I mean, it makes sense too, because we're in a very cerebral world right now, especially with technology and talking therapy and like everybody's so into like, I'm going to work on myself. And I believe me as a therapist, I really believe in that, but I just yeah. think this piece is getting neglected and our social muscles are getting atrophied, yeah. you and know, I, and I think that's important. Yeah. And I think what you're saying too, um, you know, it does apply regardless of gender. You know, I think it's kind of about an energy and like a polarity. And so really finding like what feels right for you, because I feel like I have a lot of masculine energy, but I've also noticed I have a lot of feminine energy too. And I feel more relaxed, you know? So even, I almost think this is like an anxiety antidote as well. It's <laughs> like a yeah. dating tip. <laughs> Right. I was joking. Well, and actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up in the DSM at some point um, hmm. that there should be a diagnosis of dating anxiety. Like, oh, for sure. It's That's real. huge. It, yeah. it's, it's huge. And I yes. just think, even with the swipe culture and, you know, like people just going so fast, it's, it's like hustle creating culture. A lot of, yeah, yeah. It's creating a lot of anxiety. Yeah. It's, yeah, the more we're talking about this, I'm like, we just kind of took our hustle culture from work and like moved it over into dating. And it is all this like masculine energy. And I just had an interesting chat with a client earlier today who's a man. And we were talking about that, how, you know, 
And I do think it's starting to shift. And like you said, maybe there's another wave of, of feminine energy or awareness coming around. But this idea that as women to be powerful, we need to be more masculine is, you know, false. And like, we can be more or equally or whatever, super powerful in feminine energy. And also, you know, even if you identify as a man, feminine energy is good for you too sometimes, <laughs> you know? Oh my God. And there's so many studies out there that says like, your femininity is more powerful than yeah. anything, you yeah. know? And so to your point, when women try to be men, it just, it doesn't work. And actually, do you know, there was a study that showed that women who exuded more femininity and flirtation, even in the, in the workplace got, and not because they were being highly sexualized. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about that. They were just seen as more charismatic. And hmm. so they got put in higher positions and they're more in leadership positions. Interesting. And so when people can embrace that part that you don't have to lose your femininity and, and you still are super powerful. Yeah. We got that. Like men don't have that, you right. know? And so it's something to really embrace. Yeah. Although I do think the men should develop it. And I will say a couple of my like most wealthy male clients ever both said like unprompted that they felt like they had a quite a bit of feminine energy and that they felt that that was a helpful thing for them. Oh, I agree. And you know, mm -hmm. um, there is a new trend that's called the modern masculinity uh, mm. right now with dating. Uh, it just came out in a report for 2023. And okay, I want to hear all about this. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about it, but I will just summarize it with what you just said is okay. that there is just this kind of like now excitement around men expressing themselves more and using more emotion in the way yes. that they interact. Yes. And it's, and it's seen as sexy now. And I, I love, love, I love it. it. That's I mean, who I'm into. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Because it speaks our language. Like that makes sense. I mean, we still want like some sort of masculine energy, yep. but it doesn't have to look like the Marlboro man or like, you know, the, mm -mm. the traditional sense, you know, no. and it's it, again, it's like, just more the modern version. I think both men and women, we all have both masculine and feminine. Absolutely. Energy. It's just like how we use it. Yep. Yeah. And actually, even though if we're talking about the modern guy, um, my dad's about to turn 70 and I actually think he was a great example for me of that. You know, I felt like he was very masculine guy, but he also would like cry watching movies. <laughs> and like when my mom took us to Florida for spring break with her parents, he would like cry when we were leaving. He's very in touch with his emotions, super like intuitive and empathic. And so I think that that's important for men to realize too, is like, you can be these things. You can be great with emotions. You can be a great communicator. You can be intuitive and not give up your masculine side as well, you know, or your masculine essence even. And and again, regardless of gender, if you identify as non-binary too, like yeah. just, I think it's important to create an awareness of like mm -hmm. what's going on with your energy and like, is it working for you? Exactly. And who you're right. attracted. Right. right. Because like we all yes. have different people that we're attracted to. That is such a good point. And like if your type isn't working for you, then you got to look at you and change something so that you mm -hmm. get a different result. Because, yeah. you know, I hear that all the time. Like I'll have women say, oh, I just attract all these beta men and weak yes. guys. I'm like, okay, well, there's a pattern. So we yeah. need to like – look at that pattern and we can't change the men, but we can change something that maybe you're doing to attract that in. And this woman, oh, this God. particular woman was completely what I call the chief archetype. Like she was running her love life like a business, like the CEO, <laughs> you know, I said, so, so I had to help her be more in her feminine and learning how to receive and slow down. And, you know, like there was a softening, that yeah. got to happen. And yeah. even in the clothes she wore, she wore great clothes, mm -hmm. but for business, like not oh. for her dating costume, as I call it, you know, <laughs> so we had to get more dating costumes. <laughs> yeah. I want to, can I hear a little bit more about the makeover and like, how do you approach that with people? Because I think that's yeah. such an interesting and important component of what you do that I think people undervalue that in general and specifically yes. in dating. I love it. And like, and that's why like, I cannot work with anybody until I see what they look like. I'm like, mm. that's, that's the first 
first thing, because remember now I work from the outside in. So it's the first right. thing that I look at. So and sometimes it's changing the wardrobe. Sometimes it's changing the body language. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's a make under. Sometimes it's like too oh. much, you know? And so there's different images that people portray and it's just a matter, like, is it working for them from the pictures they put online to how they dress when they're out and about to like on a date, what do they wear? So I'm very specific and intentional in the way that I dress people. And, um, and everyone can do this because I'm, again, like I like tactical things. Yeah. I call it the three C's and okay. you can kind of do your own audit at home. Love this. By doing this. Um, so the first thing is I, the cut. That's the first C. And the cut is um, basically knowing your body type. I'm very scientific in the way I approach clothes. I'm not this like cookie cutter stylist from LA and say, oh, cool. you just wear those, you look fabulous. <laughs> well, maybe you might look fabulous, but somebody might not look fabulous in the same outfit. And once you know what your body type is, there's five mm -hmm. body types. Actually, if you go to my website, kimmysalzer.com forward slash style, you can pick it up. Fine. And it, it teaches you how to measure yourself. And okay. once you measure yourself, your shoulders, your waist, your hips, you know exactly what type you are. And then in the guide, I go over what clothes flatter your figure and what clothes to stay away from. Wow. And it helps you with your confidence in your clothes because yes. like, a lot of people might go shopping. And they're like, oh, I hate shopping simply because they're just putting on the wrong things. You know, like they may look mm -hmm. at the mannequin and say, oh, I like that outfit, but it's wrong for their body. Right. So of course they're going to hate it on themselves, you know? So that's, that's really important. Um, the second C is color. Okay. So color is a big part of attraction. Um, you heard my red dress moment. Yes. Uh, you know, if you are a woman, I will say wear something red in one of your profile pics because okay. it, it's one of the most attractive colors for men. It's been scientifically okay. proven. Love this. To be the case. Um, and for men to wear blue because blue okay. usually is an attractive color for men. And But you have to have the hmm. right color red for your skin tone. So you really oh. have to know your skin tone and what works, you know, like an orange red might not look good on you, but a blue red will. And so that's, that's important. And like in my story, if you are into black or you maybe live in New York and that's just yeah. kind of style, right? I am like wearing black now. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> like I love black. Don't get yeah, me wrong. I, I think black. there's a time and place. I think guys find black sexy and it's slimming. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just that, how are you using it? Like, is it that all you're wearing? Are you wearing it to right. hide? But even if you're wearing black, could you pop a red lip and, or like some cool right. red glasses or right. like a really bright purse, you know, something mm -hmm. that makes you kind of stand out and pop. Yeah. So um, color is the second C. The third C is confident clothes, meaning mm. everybody has an outfit in their closet that they know they feel confident in, right? Like yep. if you had an event tomorrow, you know, you pull that outfit, take that outfit out and like do an audit on it and say, well, what is it about this outfit that makes mm. me feel great? Is it the color? Is it the way that makes you feel like the fabric? Um, do you get complimented in it? Like what is it? And, and try to replicate that out those elements of it, you know, in, in your, outfit. I like this. Oh. And it's, I, it's, I think these are things most people just never think about. Right. And, and, and that's, what's so fun. And I do these virtual makeovers. So sometimes hmm. I'll just like, and I, and I can do them anywhere in the world, you know, and I help people create virtual closets and they put their pictures in and I go virtual shopping together. It's oh kind of like, I, love that. Pinterest, I pin different, you know, um, clothes into their closet and they can purchase it right from the closet. Cause I think oh, cool. it's also empowering to start there. This is mm -hmm. why I start on the outside because there's not too many things in life where you can get an instant result in something. Right. I mean, there's nothing right. like coming out of the dressing room and feeling like amazing. It's true. And like, what would you say if people have like gained weight recently and they like kind of don't want to buy clothes? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, a lot of people that I work with, have fluctuated in, in weight. Like they mm -hmm. either lost weight and they don't see their new body, like in mm -hmm. my story, or yeah. they're gaining weight and they don't want to invest in too much. What I will right. say is that just because you've gained weight and maybe you're not happy, it doesn't mean you have to wait until you're 20 pounds thinner to yes. feel good in your body. Absolutely. And so maybe you don't want to invest in a lot of pieces, but what are some pieces that you can wear right now that make you feel confident mm -hmm. and sexy that can move with you? So maybe it's just a pair of like leggings that kind of move with you, you know, that you can feel good with, with 
with a couple like colored tops or something mm-hmm. like that. And I love helping people just create like clothes that, or like a, an outfit that will conceal some of the areas they're not happy with. Cause yeah. I mean, let's face it, especially as we age, people gain weight in areas that never existed before and not feeling good in your body is probably the biggest thing that stops people from putting themselves out there. I know. Probably, even for, with sexual stuff, I know. You know? <laughs> which I know, you know, which we're yeah. going to talk on my podcast about. And so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, and, and if you knew that there were some tricks in your mm-hmm. clothes that can make you feel confident right away, it makes a huge difference when you're walking out it in the really world. It really does. And I kind of want to like challenge everyone listening. Think about a time when you put an outfit on and felt better because I know I've had those days where I was like, I don't want to go to this event or like, I don't want, you know, I just want to like be a blob in sweatpants. And then I like put on the outfit anyways. And I was like, oh, I do look cute, don't I? I kind of want to go. Right. <laughs> you know? I mean, let's face it, a good hair day is a good day. Like, right. right. When you're having a bad hair day, I mean, image matters. I know we all want to think it's superficial, but it's it's not. not. Like there's so much research out there. Mm -hmm. There's actually shifts that go on in the brain. They've studied this, that when you wear certain clothes, the chemistry in your brain actually shifts. It's fascinating. I'm not surprised. I mean, because I get the same thing a little bit with sexuality where, you know, people will say things like, well, you know, sex isn't what should matter. Like sex is, you know, kind of superficial or it's just about like getting off or something. And it's like, no, it was about Mm -hmm. so much more than that, you know, and I had a former client who kind of came in one day and he's like, you know what? I decided that it's okay for sex to be important to me. And I was like, hello, yes, you know? Um, And I think it's the same thing with appearance. Like it's okay to care about how you look. It's okay to care about how you're presenting yourself. Absolutely. And you know, what's interesting about image, uh, John Gray wrote a book called The Winning Image and he defined image so beautifully. It's like, it's how others perceive you and that determines how people will treat you. Mm -hmm. And it's really true. Like it only takes now, research says seven seconds to make a first impression. It used to be 30 seconds just years ago. So like, look at how fast our brains are going. (laughs) And people are judging based on two things. They, they studied this. It's what you're wearing Mm -hmm. and the attitude that you have. So okay. that's why like all this worry about what to say and how to proceed or it's like, it's not even as important as how you show up. And once you get past that, it makes you more confident, you know, that it's a barrier that's immediately broken down where then you can work on the inside. I mean, that's a longer game as you and I both know. Um, and it's super important, but this is like a, a, a boost that can Absolutely. really Absolutely. Like give you. yourself a head start, people. <laughs> <laughs> right, like it's hard right? enough. Let's not make it harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I love simplifying things. Oh, it, yeah. It, it is way more simpler than a lot of times people make it out to be. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. So tell us a little bit about the charisma quotient, like your signature program in general. Like how do you work with people? Well, right. Like what I said, the three pillars are what I said before. It's your style intelligence, your emotional intelligence, and your social intelligence. And for me, it's just, you know, in my first session with people, probably like you, I Mm -hmm. like to get a history from the time you were an embryo all the way up until now. And I just, (laughs) you get to see patterns, right? And, Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of, all right, well, what strategies do we need to put into place to mm-hmm. break some of these patterns? Because on the forefront, somebody might come to me and say, you know, find me a man, find me a woman, help right. me find love. It's like, okay, right. well, I will help you do that, but there may be some things we need to work on along the way in order, in right. order to get there. I I'll, I love this story. A woman, she that's what she said to me. She's like, find me my soulmate. I said, okay. I I can help you, but there are some skills that are missing. I, right. I'm, like I said, very skill based. Mm-hmm. So after like looking at those three areas, I determined that you know one of her biggest blocks was the way she was putting herself out there. Like she was hiding in her clothes. She was not okay. loving herself. You know, yeah. um, poor body image. You know, very insecure, low self worth. Mm-hmm. And so she was seeking the soulmate to fill up the validation of herself. And I had to reverse engineer it. I know you do work on that too. It's like, no, first you fill yourself up and then you attract the light. Right. And so that's what we did. And, you know, we, we did the makeover process. I was helping her like 
with the emotional intelligence, express herself, use feeling words in storytelling when she was on dates, Love like it. very specific things. Um, and then the flirting piece. And one of the things I tell a lot of my clients, and they hate me in the beginning for it until they don't. Okay. Um, I said, you're not allowed to be in boyfriend or girlfriend mode. Like you're, we're, we're taking you back to kindergarten and you're just learning how to play in the playground. That's it. <laughs> you, you have to like play with people you're not yeah. attracted to. You yeah. You have to like, like get along with everyone. Yes, exactly. And so, um, what was so amazing at the end of the story uh, and of our coaching cycle, she ended up finding her soulmate. He was a great Aww. guy. And she said, you know, Kim, I am the happiest that I have been in my entire life. And weirdly, it's not because of the guy that I met. I said, oh, yeah? So what are you happy about? She said, for the first time, I love me. Aww. And I just remember like I, getting teary-eyed and listening to this. I'm like, so you finally got that, huh? She's like, yeah. She's like, and I know that even if this guy doesn't work out, I still have me. I mean, that's like the best place you could ever hope your client gets to. The the most. Like, same thing with yeah. the dating retreats that I have. Um, and we do a lot, like from salsa dancing to uh, to the whole makeover, to taking mm -hmm. pictures. You know, I do – it's all experiential stuff. Love that. And, and – all the attendees at the last one said the same thing. They're like, wow, like this really wasn't a dating retreat. This was, a, this was about me. I'm like, oh, you just yeah. thought that great. <laughs> so you know, it, it's a beautiful do. process. Yeah. Really, I guess I could sum it up by saying I help people fall in love with themselves so that other people oh, fall in love with them. Oh, that is beautiful. You know, well, thank you so much for like sharing all of this. And I would love to tell people where can they find you if they're curious to learn more about this amazing work. Oh, thank you so much for having me. First of all, super fun. I could talk to you forever. I feel like you're a sister. Um, so yeah, you can go to my website is Kimmy Seltzer, K-I-M-M-Y-S-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com. Um, and then you just put a forward slash style if you want to get that style guide. Um, and all my social handles are at Kimmy Seltzer. And then of course, my podcast, The Charisma Quotient. Yes. And her podcast is fun. I've listened to that as well. So go check that out. And I'm also going to do the style quiz because why wouldn't you? <laughs> I know. Oh, and I can give your listeners the um, archetype quiz too. It's in my oh, website, nice. but if you want a link to that, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll put all of these links in the show notes, guys. So if you just scroll down on the episode page, you will find them all and they'll be clickable. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you.